Hello, hello. Hello, welcome everybody. How are we doing? Uh, I have I have somebody coming to my house, I think tomorrow to look at uh, getting some blinds or shades put up behind me. So my head isn't quite as glowing behind me. I know I look like an angel, but uh, uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome. We're going to give a minute here for everyone to hop on. And we're still waiting for Dr. Saunders. He should be showing up any minute now. Um, let's see. He was in Hawaii, I think, last week for a few days. Like, oh, really? Yeah, he was like remodeling somebody's bathroom. <laughs> really? Pretty normal he has, for a doctor. He has a lot of, he's able to do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Would love to hear from you in the chat. So Tell us uh, where you're calling in from today, where you're joining us. And uh, yeah, tell us also, tell us a little bit about your journey, if you wouldn't mind. Share a couple sentences with everybody else. Like if you're just getting started with us, um, so we're talking about the Diabetes Solution Kit today and every week. And uh, today is the basics of type two. Every other week we do um we just talk about yeah what is what does it mean how does it look to reverse type 2 diabetes and dr saunders is awesome joins us with and answers questions and you guys have the opportunity to ask your questions so we started this um webinar about boy two and a half years ago when i felt like well i had a friend tell me don't just try to help people or help more people but help people more I thought that was a really good concept, help people more. So we started this webinar and it's been awesome. So the, there's Dr. Saunders, hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and that's what, uh, oops, I'm pinned here. So that's why we do this webinar. So yeah, share, share about uh, in the chat, tell us about your journey a little bit. Um, tell us how long you've been joining us and maybe, Ask some, you know, share any obstacles you might have, any frustrations, any success stories. We love to hear from you guys. So it helps us to know that we're doing a good job. Also helps us to identify opportunities so that we can uh, help you more. And we want to know, you know, as you go through this diabetes solution kit, what do you love about it? What do you struggle with? Like, what are some parts maybe that aren't clear? We're always working on improving. This is actually the 10th edition of this. So, man, I don't even remember what year we started, we published this. The, um, the, the first one looks a lot different than this one though. So that, that's interesting how things, how Dr. Saunders, you're an awesome researcher and you find things that are new and helpful. And um, I mean, one of the things the last couple of years you've talked about is the 610 reset. And Dr. Saunders looks frozen, either that or he's just completely still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> you didn't blink for like a minute. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so stuff like the 610 reset. And Dr. Saunders, have you found any new discoveries lately that help people with type 2? New discoveries. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I was doing some research on exercise, and uh, exercise is really interesting. Um, about um, what it what it does and how it affects type two. Um, so we talk about diabetes as uh, as as if it were one thing, but it's like a whole bunch of things like conglomerated into one. It's how your metabolism works so generally, and uh, so when when we talk about how. Uh, basically type two diabetes, you have these cells that are stuffed full of sugar and, and they're just, they're, they're overloaded with sugar and they're toxic on sugar. And so what we do is in the, in the diabetes solution kit, we, we, we take people off of sugar. So you say, okay, you can only have 20 grams of carbohydrates a day, uh, which is not very much by the way, <laughs> like a, a slice of bread or a, uh, an apple, a little more than that, but you know that's it's not very much. So, um, uh, so because these these cells are stuffed with sugar, and we take you off the sugar um, so that you can uh, you can start uh, using sugar normally. 
But what we often don't talk about, it's in the book, but, but we don't give it a big, uh, make it a big part of it is exercise. That you, you actually have to use up all that glycogen, which is the starch that's made, that's the, that, that your cells are packed with. You have to use all that up. And, uh, and uh, one way of using it up, of course, is to just, um, just wait, because eventually it'll get used up. But you can certainly increase the benefit by exercising. Exercise is like getting a shot of insulin. Do you know that when you exercise, um, you don't have to have insulin to get sugar into your muscle cells. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have, if you eat fat, because we put you on a very low carbohydrate diet, and they, there tends to be more fat in that diet, it makes you resistant to insulin. Um, but when you're exercising, you don't have to have insulin to get sugar into the cells. Your muscle cells will suck up the extra sugar um, even if you don't have enough insulin. So if you have type one diabetes and you exercise on a regular basis, you can keep your blood sugar a lot better, more normal, more stable. Um, people that have brittle diabetes, they can stabilize their diabetes just by adding exercise in a significant amount of exercise. And, uh, and all you have to do is use up all the energy that you're uh, muscles have stored in them uh, and uh, and the glycogen gets used up and then and then everything opens up and now you got normal you don't have insulin resistance anymore things flow better you have stable blood sugars you have, there are other issues besides that but the exercise is a big deal and I, I didn't realize that you know we've we've ha hardly talked about that maybe once yeah. or twice so yeah, this is great. Um, we've heard a lot about endorphins in the past, like how good they are. I don't know. Can you just explain, tell me as a third grader, what, what are endorphins? How do they work? And what are they good for? <laughs> okay. Endorphins. Um, have you ever heard of morphine? Yes. Um, morphine, heroin, um, codeine, uh, hydrocodone, oxycodone. Um, all of those are drugs uh, that attach to the receptors of endorphins. Um, endorphins are naturally normally in your body. That, that, that's what you um, naturally use. So if you look at what uh, the word endorphin means, endogenous morphine, that's where it came from. Uh, because they found the morphine first. And then after they had morphine, then they started looking, well, why do we have morphine receptors? And so then they found the chemi chemicals that, um, that, that, uh, that, the, that those endorphin receptors use and that they called those endorphins. So what do they do? Well, everything heroin does. They make you feel good. Uh, they get rid of pain. They make you pain-free. Um, they suppress your adrenal glands so that you don't have an excessive stress response. They decrease stress. Uh, they they uh, help the body to, um, to decrease all of the catabolic processes that cause stress and breakdown and inflammation. It's all just the opposite of that. Endorphins um, uh, prevent you from getting pain. So. You know how some people are really sensitive to pain, they get a little pinprick and they're like, ah, they're screaming, this is horrible, ah, I can't survive. Uh, and other people are like, my, it's totally, what, my children. Um, um, one of my sons was just a drama queen, I, I swear that little boy, uh, he would, uh, he'd fall down and get, I don't know, even the, the littlest thing, it'd just be at the end of the world, like, ah, <laughs> screaming in pain. And my daughter uh, was like running after the boys and she'd slip and fall and skin up her knees, get road rash all over the place. She'd just get up and keep running. She didn't care, right? Um, one day uh, she was 18 months old and her brother, uh, there was a board. Uh, she was walking down a plank uh, from the house to the, to the yard. And, uh, and her brother saw her on the board and goes, ha, ha, ha jumped on the board and bounced her off it and she fell down, broke her arm, um, 
and uh, and I didn't know her arm was broken, of course. So so uh, so she comes to me crying, and uh, and I'm like, oh poor Charlie, you know. And so she's uh, so um, she stops crying and goes out and plays, and she walks around the house for two days with two doctors in the house, um, and we didn't know her arm was broken until we picked her up by her arm. She went ah, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> But you know, she she just didn't care about pain that much. So some people are really sensitive to pain; other people are not so sensitive, and that has a lot to do with endorphins. What what they um, how much they make their natural production of endorphins. That's interesting. Uh, I've been thinking about. It. I used to be pretty wimpy and like sensitive to pain a lot more, um, but I I've noticed like uh, the last few years. Even just like banging my hand or thumb or toe or whatever, running into something like in the past, I would like, like, oh, that hurt, you know, but nowadays I, and I think it is. Here's what I think my theory, since I started playing hockey, I've gotten more aggressive, like, <laughs> and, you know, running around, running into people and running into the boards and falling down, like, but like you kind of build up. A bit of a pain tolerance and also I think it's just added like a sense of like fun and excitement in my life and like I feel like I just I'm more uh, a happy you know happy person lately since I think hockey has something to do with it so but like why else would I bang my foot against the wall or something like I've always done my whole life where and it like it doesn't hurt as much anymore and maybe it's I don't know maybe it's mental Maybe it's because I watch all these webinars with you and I'm just, you know. <laughs> well, as long as, as long as we're talking about pain, um, there's a lot of interesting things about, about that too. If, if you're playing hockey and you're focused on the puck uh, and, and somebody runs across your toes and cuts your toes off, um, and, and you keep going after the puck and, and, uh, and everybody has to, hey, wait, 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 stop. You're letting blood all over the, the, the rink here. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. because, because the, of the focus, when people are focused on the pain, there's actually more pain. It's not, it's not, it's not made up in your mind. It's measurable. They, they can measure the amount of, of, of the number of, or the frequency of the impulses going through pain nerves and they, they put electrodes on them. And when people focus on their back pain, there is more back pain. When they're mm. focused on something outside of themselves, there's less back pain. There's actually less um, uh, impulses going through the nerves and there is actually less pain. So, mm. you know, that's, that's where you are with the hockey. You're focused on the puck and whatever else happens is like, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, huh? Uh, I just had a spiritual thought, but uh, uh, that might lead us down a whole nother tangent, but uh, well, good stuff. So yeah, circling back, uh, a little housekeeping. Um, Leslie, we haven't heard from you, the star of the show yet. So like, say hello and tell people what we're doing here, how they can get in, involved, what website we have for them, all that good stuff. Hello, everyone. And thanks, Joe, for that wonderful introduction there. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is the fixed blood sugar webinar. So I'm seeing in our chat that we have quite a few people who are new to either the webinar or maybe using the diabetes solution kit. And um, Joe, if you could hold that up again. Yes, right here. Is, this is really why we are all here. And since there are so many new people on, um, I just want to give you some background information. Dr. Saunders has seen many, many patients and uh, who have struggled with type two. And they come to his office and basically what he tells them is what's in this book. And so we've made this available, uh, do we dare say for a lot less expensive of a price uh, than if you were to go to his office. But anyway, um, it is available for all of you at martinwebinar.com. And I'm gonna post that actually in the chat so that you can find more information. Um, but this is what everyone's talking about when they're talking about the diabetes solution kit, or they're talking about their progress or their numbers. Uh, it's because of the information that they're getting in this book and the information they are getting on this webinar. So if you by chance are seeing this webinar for the first time, 
register for it so that you get a reminder every week to hop on. There is so much information on these webinars. It is a uh, free opportunity to ask a doctor a few questions. And so um, it's really just a great value to, to everyone. We have a lot of people also that post in the comments uh, to each other and they help us out with things. So that's kind of what we're doing here on the webinar. We talk about type two every other week. We talk about a specific topic uh, related to type two that maybe comes in from some of our customers. And uh, this week we are going to talk about type two in general. And so um, I think we're going to have Dr. Saunders actually give us a disclaimer and then we're going to let him chat and we're going to answer your questions. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Hey, uh, okay. <clears throat> so um, nothing in the world is free. You have to make sacrifices. So everything you hear on this is for general information purposes and, and may apply to you, but we can't be too sure. So um, it's not um, the specific advice for you. So you take, take whatever information you get here and see if it applies to you. And sometimes you may need help, like with your healthcare provider or, or uh, advisor. Uh, somebody who can who can help you to apply the information to yourself. Um, we we try. I try to make it as general as possible, even when people have specific questions. So um, what we discuss is primarily type two, and the basics of type two uh, are actually very simple. Uh, I was just talking a little bit uh, a little earlier about um, what happens to the cells. When, when you were eating sugar. So we eat sugar and we're not using it very much because you know we have sedentary lifestyles. I do, I sit all day long. Um, I have one of these Fitbit things and my, um, uh, my wife and I have contests to see who can get the most steps in a day uh, and burn the most calories. And dang, she beats me almost every day <laughs> uh, because what, I'm sitting all day long, I, you know, I don't, uh, I, I, I've been thinking of getting a stand-up desk, but it's kind of, I don't know, me standing up, patient sitting down, I don't know, it just doesn't, it hasn't worked very well at now. Anyway, so, so as we're eating on a regular basis or three meals a day or whatever, um, it doesn't take much to build up a level of, of sugar in your cells because the cells are bringing in sugar and they're storing it. And at some point, they get uh, full, full of sugar and it's called glycogen. It's the kind of like a starch that they store, the type of sugar. And, and once, they're, once they're completely full, what they'll do is they'll block the insulin receptors from letting more sugar in. So they're like, well, no, I'm full. I can't take any more sugar. We call that insulin resistance from the outside, but from the inside, it's just, hey, I got too much here. And so uh, type two is, uh, uh, is an, an illness. It's not really an illness. It's, it's just too much. It's just sort of a toxicity problem. And, uh, and if you were toxic on lead, you would try and get rid of all the lead in your life, right? Get it all out. Uh, if you were toxic on anything, you would say, there's too much. You got to get rid of it. Well, too much sugar has the same issue and that is the cells get full of it and they block uh, from the inside saying no 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 can't take anymore um, so you eat more but the cells aren't bringing it in so what happens well then your blood sugar starts to go up because the cells are going no no we got enough we're good uh, and that has multiple effects on the bodies it affects your brain it affects your heart it affects your kidneys um, and what's really interesting is let's take the brain for example um, when all of your muscle cells have too much, your liver cells have too much, your blood sugar starts going up, and you have this sort of um, adjusted, your blood sugar normal, instead of being 70 to 90, is now like 120, 140, right? Um, well, the net effect of that is in other tissues in your body, like your kidneys and your brain, um, you, you make less of the glucose transport proteins that bring the sugar from the blood into the brain. 
So now you have diminished ability to get sugar from your blood into your brain because uh, sugar can't cross the blood brain barrier. It has to be transported in. Well, now with high blood sugar, you decrease the amount of glucose transport protein. So now you have less ability to bring just little bits. So people get Alzheimer's disease. The number one cause of dementia is type two. So anybody who's on this, who's, who's listening to this uh, and has type two should know that they're at risk. And why are they at risk? Because of not getting enough sugar into the brain. So that's the, the paradox. The irony of it here is the brain is starving in a sea of sugar. Like the sugar is high everywhere, all the way around. All the blood has sugar in it, but it can't get from the blood into the brain because of those the diminished um, glucose transport proteins. So um, having getting your blood sugar down into the normal range is a very important thing. In fact, it's been shown that before people even get tick technical diabetes where their hemoglobin A1C is over 6.5, um, they can already have kidney failure. They can already have uh, memory problems. They can already have heart problems and neuropathy in their feet. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to have um, actual diagnosis of diabetes in order to have those issues because you've had minor elevations in blood sugar over a long period of time and have decreased the number of those glucose transport proteins. So it's really important to get your blood sugar down to normal. I know we've often talked about insulin resistance and how important that is and uh and uh, today about exercise but ultimately getting your blood sugar down is also a very important thing and that's something that uh, uh um allows the brain to to get enough because when your blood sugar drops down then your blood brain barrier goes oh we need more glucose transport proteins and it makes more there was a study done on rats where um, they, they, they were diabetic rats and they, they gave them insulin to drop their blood sugar to 40. So they kept it right around 40. And I don't know if any of you have ever been at 40, but that's where you're feeling it. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, oh, I feel horrible fatigue and weakness and even headaches. Uh, and you're not gonna be able to think clearly and your rats are probably laying around going, gee, I don't feel good. Um, but by the third day, the rats were up running around on their treadmill and acting like normal rats. And uh, so they, they checked their blood sugar, still 40. So how were they being normal at 40? Everything looked normal. They were hypoglycemic, but, but they were acting normally. And so they, they did a biopsy of the blood-brain barrier and found 10 times the number of glucose transport proteins. It took them three days, but they made a bunch and uh, increased that so that they could suck sugar from this little bit of sugar on the, on, the, on the blood side. They could suck a ton of sugar into it so that the brain had enough. And, and that's what happens when you normalize your blood sugar. And that's why we don't worry too much about you getting low blood sugar. Like if you're in the 60s or the 50s, uh, you don't have to, you know, drink orange juice or anything. Um, um, and, and instead, I usually recommend people eat something like baby carrots are really good or almonds, raw almonds, uh, something that's not high in sugar like raisins or, you know, a high sugar fruit like mangoes or pineapple. Um, something to, to just gradually bring it up to normal so that you don't you know overshoot and get your blood sugar high the because 50s is pretty low right 50s even 60, 50s and 60s is pretty low blood sugar yeah you'll usually feel it at 50 and 60 um, yeah. but what's really interesting if if your normal has been reset to like 150 and and you get it down to 100 you may feel that you may feel like, oh, I feel weak and tired and dizzy and, and I can't focus anymore. You know, I got this brain fog um, and, and my blood sugar is normal. It's 100. But if you're used to being at 150, 
the number of glucose transport proteins is going to be diminished. And so when you get down to 100, now your brain's not getting enough sugar. So, uh, so that's okay on a temporary basis, but just so that you know what's going on. Uh, it is important to get that blood sugar down into the 70 to 90 range to avoid the complications of diabetes. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Cinechroma, our best-selling advanced blood sugar support formula. Now, thousands of people around the world are taking Cinechroma every day as part of their program to fix their blood sugar using natural ingredients that simply work. Now, Dr. Saunders formulated Cinechroma to meet key nutritional deficiencies that most people have unknowingly suffered from for far too long. With Cinechroma, you get a blend of six key ingredients. The perfect combination of chromium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, which it's important to take those two together, selenium, vanadium, and our 10 to 1 cinnamon bark extract. Now, if you're not already using Cinechroma, I highly recommend that you give it a try and see how it helps your energy, your weight, and your blood sugar numbers. You can get Cinechroma at bartonnutrition.com or on Amazon. If you get it at bartonnutrition.com, you can enter the coupon code webinar25 and you'll save 25% off at bartonnutrition.com. But I realize some people like to go to Amazon as well. So anyways, Cinechroma, highly recommend. Now let's get you back to the fixed blood sugar webinar. Hmm. Yeah, good stuff. <clears throat> So circling back to endorphins a little bit, my curiosity, what does endogenous mean? Endo endogenous oh, morphine. Yeah, what's endogenous endo means your body makes it. It's internal. Okay. Yeah, exogenous means it comes from externally. So heroin is an external endorphin. <laughs> endorphin is the endogenous morphine. <laughs> okay. So when people take morphine, I'm assuming they take it in doses that are much higher than what your body would naturally produce itself. Oh, oh yeah yeah that do doses yeah yeah okay yeah generally okay. quite a bit more yeah interesting and then so besides exercise what are other ways that you can your body produces endorphins i think oh. sex is one way uh, yeah. but yeah Ex what else exercise is great but you have to exercise enough um to use up the oxygen level so you have to get to the point where um, where, uh, where you, where, um, you no longer have, uh, <laughs> enough oxygen to supply the muscles. So you have to you do anaerobic respiration. Um, and, and that's the exercise part, but fasting is a great way to improve your endorphins. Um, you okay. make a hormone called ghrelin when your stomach is empty. Um, uh, and, uh, and that, makes you more sensitive to your endorphins too. So not only do you make more, you get more sensitive to them by having an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. That's what fasting is. Fasting is just an empty stomach. So, you know, just overnight you, you can fast, but the longer you fast, actually the better. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's, let's get into exercise some more. It's been a while since we've talked about this. Um, what do you recommend for like the time to exercise? I would assume uh, exercising on an empty stomach. So maybe mornings, uh, or, or even maybe at night, or what are your thoughts on the timing? I, I prefer exercising on an empty stomach just because I don't know, you know, my, my kids, um, uh, they, I'd come home for dinner, uh, and then we'd have this big dinner. Uh, and then my kids would always say, let's go jump on the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> right. bad timing for that yeah uh i, I just don't like em uh, exercising on a full stomach some people are fine with it and they do better with it um yeah. so yes i prefer the morning uh exercise um and and i don't know that there's a, a better time like a, a later time earlier time i've read some research on it um a long time ago but it wasn't clear that uh, that it was there was any improvement in function or anything by exercising at night versus in the morning yeah i prefer working out like late afternoon so i might eat lunch around noon and then i'll work out at three or four o'clock 
And that seems to be kind of my peak time for uh, output and energy and get a good workout in. But I think a lot of it, it, it just uh, kind of depends on your own biorhythm, circadian rhythm, that type of thing, how you're feeling, energy levels. Um, can you talk also about, um, like, let's say somebody doesn't have an hour to work out. What are, like, we've talked about HIT before, high intensity interval training. Um, I think you recommend that. Uh, just one, you I think it, that A word you said, ana something. It, Anaerobic it, respiration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you can do that with hit exercise. So what would be maybe a couple of good exercises and uh, like, and how long, just like if somebody wanted to do that every day, what, what would you recommend? Oh, this is, this is so easy. It's not even hard. So, so um, start off with running and, uh, and you don't have to kill yourself. You just have to get your muscles a, a big enough workout to where you're breathing hard, which means uh, you've used up all the oxygen in your in your blood kind of thing when and you have to replace that so uh, so you push as hard as you can for about 10 seconds of running so you sprint for 10 seconds and count to 10 it's not that hard and then you walk uh for about 30 seconds and then you sprint as as fast as you can uh for about 10 seconds and then you walk for about 30 seconds. And so you do that kind of exercise for a total of 10 minutes a day. Anybody can do 10 minutes a day. And you know what? Um, the research has shown that is as good as running marathons for keeping your muscle mass up, your energy up, and, and keeping your, your body younger. In fact, um, doing more is not necessarily better because the more exercise you do, the more oxygen free radicals you start making and that causes more damage like DNA damage and, and stuff. So you actually create more inflammation if you do excessive exercise. There is a too much of exercise too. So um, yeah, and so if you do that 10 minutes a day, um, the running is an easy way to start, but for those who can't run, you could do home calisthenics. Well, that's essentially what I do is uh, I do uh, push-ups just as fast as I can. I, I'm, get, I'm up to about 30 of them. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I walk around for a while and then I'll do sit-ups as many as I can. Uh, and then I'll walk around for a while. Um, so the walking in between or the light exercise in between uh, is a good way of, of maintaining the activity. Um, but, but it's the, the pushing your muscles to the limit that really keeps your muscle mass up, keeps your metabolism up, uh, and and uh, helps you maintain strength and agility and power. Yeah, that's great. So really, depending, I mean, no matter what level of uh, fitness you're at, like if you're just starting and like you're overweight and out of shape, like it might even be a brisk walk that's going to get you out of breath in 10 seconds, but Hey, that's where you start and start with that. And then as you, it's like that consistency every day, 10 minutes a day, just like, you'll see that improvement. And, and pretty soon 30 days later, like you're running, you're doing things that you didn't think you could do. And, and it's uh, like, look at the progress. Don't look at, don't compare yourself to other people. Just look at the progress that you can make in a short amount of time. And then, yeah, that has um, awesome benefits for your health. You'll feel better. You'll get those endorphins flowing, which is like a multiplier effect in, in your health, in your life. I mean, so many things are affected like that. So um, let's talk about fasting. So this is one of the things we talk about a lot, but for, for new people here, um, one of the things that Dr. Saunders teaches and that we have in the Diabetes Solution Kit is the is intermittent fasting and specifically the 610 reset so 610 reset means um, go to bed at 10 o'clock on an empty stomach that's the key and the six is typically if you stop eating at six o'clock then you give your your stomach time to empty itself four hours should be enough time assuming you're not eating like a pizza like you said because that can take like six to eight hours to digest through your stomach, but um, stop eating at six o'clock at night, go to bed on an empty stomach at 10 o'clock. And yeah, what does that do for somebody? 
Um, oh, there are so many benefits that the primary thing, it keeps your circadian rhythm. So if you've ever heard of circadian rhythm, we call it the sleep wake cycle. So you're asleep at night or awake during the day. And that's what, what the circadian rhythm is. But what we often don't consider is that our circadian rhythm is metabolism as well. It's the chemistry of our body. And the chemistry of our body is different during the day than it is at night during, because of that circadian rhythm. So during the day, we have catabolic metabolism. And what that means is you're breaking down your body. You are causing um, inflammation. You're creating oxygen-free radicals because you're doing stuff. And it's just like driving your car. If, if you're driving your car, you're breaking down your car. I don't care how careful you drive. Uh, you're, you're wearing out your engine, your engine's getting hot, your tires are wearing out, even the seat you're sitting in is wearing out while you're driving it. Um, then um, uh, at night, what we get to do that a car doesn't get to do is we get to repair all the damage that was done. All the, uh, every little um, nick, uh, in your bones and uh, in your joints and all the all the wearing out from your repetitive motion stuff, all that gets repaired at night if you get into anabolic metabolism. And the best way to do that is to to go to bed on an empty stomach by 10 o'clock. Why 10? Does it have to be 10? It turns out, yeah, it has to be 10 when they did research on people who did shift work and those that worked till 11, the three to 11 um, shift did not get anabolic. Uh, they, they stayed catabolic because they didn't get to, to sleep in time because the, the human growth hormone that initiates that is gener generally released when the, the cortisol is at the lowest point, which happens at 10 o'clock. Unless you're awake, then your cortisol doesn't go down and then you don't release the human growth hormone. So, so the way the system is set up, it's beautiful, but you have to work with your body and working with your circadian rhythm means um, going to bed by 10 with an empty stomach. And there's one other thing in there that, that I sometimes will tell you, and that is the, uh, if you eat breakfast by eight o'clock in the morning, that initiates the catabolic phase which gives you a, uh, you want to uh, be totally awake during the day and totally asleep at night. You know, most people, they walk around, they're half asleep all day and half awake all night. You know, they're just kind of like their circadian rhythm is really narrow. Uh, but what you want ideally is to be totally awake during the day and totally asleep at night and, you know, deep sleep, get enough deep sleep at night. Um, and so I, I monitor on my Fitbit and I, and I actually give them, I have them in my office and, uh, I give away free, uh, Fitbits to all my patients, um, uh, because, uh, because I want them to monitor their steps every day. I want them to monitor the exercise. I want them to monitor their sleep. And then I want to see results. So they bring them in to me and I go, oh yeah, okay, uh, you're not getting enough deep sleep and you're not going to sleep in time. And look at this, this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's it's really great to monitor it. Yeah, well, we are going long. Um, Leslie has a lot of good questions that have come in. I'm going to turn things over to her so we can get rolling. All right, we have a lot of good questions that have come in. So, uh, yeah. I already lost what I was going to do. Okay, great question here. What does Dr. Saunders think of infrared saunas? Any tips on using them to get the best results? And what does an infrared sauna do for your body? I just used one on Monday. Okay. I love infrared saunas. I used to have one in the office. In fact, I still do. It's in my garage, but it's not in the office anymore. <laughs> um, so uh, infrared saunas are great. And infrared is light. It's just light. Um, but it's of a, a very long wavelength of light. And those kinds of wavelengths, they penetrate well. So you have the light, the visible light that you see is in this spectrum. And then as you get red and then the dark red and then infrared means, means it's um, under the red. Uh, and then over a little farther down, you get radio waves or microwave ovens and then radio waves. So microwave ovens heat people up, right? 
and it's very penetrating it. They heat from, not people, they hurt, heat food up from the inside out, they say, right? But not really, it's just, it's very penetrating because it's way down there. So, so a little further up from microwaves is infrared light. And that infrared energy is released as it penetrates deeper into the body. And that's actually really important. There are several um, enzymes, hormone, not, not hormones, enzymes and proteins that uh, turn on and function um, with light, penetrating light. So um, do you have to have an infrared sauna? No, in fact, um, what's really cool, you can just um, uh, put, park your car in the sunshine and sit in the car for a while as, it, as the car heats up because that, those wavelengths that are coming through from, from the sunshine on your car, whatever's coming through, and that's all infrared. So if you ever gotten into your car on a summer day when it's been sitting in the sun and you go, oh my gosh, it's hot in here. You turn on the, the air conditioner full blast and it's still hot. Why is it still so hot? You have this cold air blowing on you. It's because those infrared um, rays are penetrating through into your body and heating you up, even though you got the cold air blowing on you. Um, so, uh, you know, just like being in your car, that's an infrared sauna, essentially. Um, you can also um, just lay in the sunshine. Guess what? The sun has infrared light. The sun, the light from the sun penetrates through your skin and turns on those um, proteins uh, that are sensitive to light, that turns on the energy of your body, that improves function, um, actually prevents cancer. Uh, you get vitamin D that prevents cancer. Um, we're going to write an article on home cures that work. I'm going to put one in uh, next month uh, that is about sunshine and, and why you should uh, why you should not listen to your dermatologist and what you can do differently. And that's, that's why it's but home cures that work. It's a, a different way of looking at it from the way the, the standard, but yeah, infrared saunas are awesome. Great. Okay. Jim has a really good question. He wants to understand uh, how to read food labels. One of the things that we talk about in the diabetes solution kit is eating under 20 grams of carbs. So uh, if, if maybe you could explain how that works with fiber and his question was talking about if a recipe said three fourths of a cup is 45 grams, how many grams of carbs is that? Okay. Okay. So three, uh, 45 grams. Okay. So there, there's 45 grams of carbohydrates in something. And the problem with just having the total carbohydrates is, is you don't know um, how much of that is sugar, how much of that is starch, and how much of that is fiber, because they're all different. Um, and they're different types of carbohydrates. And fiber is a carbohydrate that you don't digest, you don't absorb, and is not made into sugar in your body. So, so we don't count that. We call it net carbs. So net carbs, when you, when you read the book, it, it describes and it shows you a label and says, okay, so here you have 45 grams of carbs and uh, 22 of those are fiber. So, so the, uh, the rest of it is sugar and starch and it'll tell you how much sugar and then you can say the rest of it is starch. It doesn't tell you how much starch, but it'll tell you sugars and then um, a total carbs, sugars, and then fiber. And you subtract the fiber from that. So if there's, 20, if there's 45 grams of carbohydrates and 22 of those are fiber, just take that out. So now you have 23 grams of, of, of carbohydrates, of net carbs in your uh, whatever label, whatever you're eating. Um, and that puts you over your limit. <laughs> so you, you can't have three quarters of a cup of that, whatever it um, is. And more, and more of the question here too was, um, okay, so he was just trying to figure out the math. If it's 20 carbs, that is per day. So 20 net carbs per day. So, uh, you know, that's under seven grams of net carbs per meal if you're eating three meals, just so we're clear. Um, it's not 20 grams per meal. So if you have other questions about that, you can email me, Jim. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and read some more questions. Are you, John is wondering if you're familiar with Glucofort at all. Uh, does it have any value in helping diabetes? Hmm. 
glucofort. I think I've heard of that before. No, I, I don't know what it is. Okay. You can let us know if you want to, Jen. Um, and let's see here, Krish. Uh, okay, I cannot drink coffee as it, I become shaky and I also have nausea. However, I can tolerate tea and do not experience any of those side effects. What does coffee contain that tea lacks? By the way, I like tea, Krish says. Uh, okay. Um, coffee contains a whole lot of things that, that tea doesn't have. Um, gosh, uh, tea comes from a leaf. Yeah, they both have some caffeine in them, but uh, coffee has some bioflavonoids in it. It's a, it's a bean, you know, you have to think of it as uh, something that, that beans contain some bioflavonoids, whereas um, tea is going to have different things in it, like, uh, like uh, carotenoids. Uh, they're just a little different. Um, but yeah, you can react to anything. You know, the, the, the tea, uh, coffee has different uh, lectins, for example, than tea. So there's, there's uh, lectins are the, the, the plant's immune system to protect them against uh, animals, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. including, or insects or something. So, uh, and, and lectins, uh, people can react to them and some people do. So you, especially beans, most types of beans contain lectins. I think, you know, once they're roasted, the, <clears throat> especially the dark roast, that's very little of that, but, you can still react to things. So I, I don't know what it would be. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I found the glucofort. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, a, it's an antioxidant primarily to improve blood sugar levels. Um, let's see. Let me see what's in it. Well, you're looking for that. Connie said, talking about exercise, maybe you all could come out with a pamphlet on different types of exercise with photos showing how to do them correctly. It's not a bad idea, Connie. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Okay. And Roy wow. says, so just a quick jump back. Exercise is, for exercise, is cardio better? or strength building better or 50, 50. And how do you gauge when you need to add more of one of the, or the other? Okay. Interesting question. Okay. So, um, uh, 50, 50 is your best bet. So it's really interesting. Um, those that, that just do muscle building and that's all they do power lifting and, you know, um, increasing muscle strength, um, they get hearts that are just, they're, they're small hearts, but they're thick walled and they just like, they pump the blood through, they're really hard. Um, and then people who do like long distance, like marathons and uh, Ironmans and all that kind of stuff, they have these large floppy boom hearts that they pump uh, 45 beats a minute, you know, 40 beats a minute. Uh, and, and, and so it turns out that if you, when you stop doing those exercises, the, uh, the people with the, 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 the small thick walled hearts, um, their, when their heart gets weaker, um, they don't have very big chambers and they get congestive heart failure from uh, diastolic dysfunction because they can't fill the whole heart all the way. And then people who do the, 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 the cardio workouts, the um, long distance running and all that, um, they get these uh, large floppy hearts and get, get congestive heart failure. So the best thing to do is both, is to, to work out. And that's where you get the benefits of the interval training, where you're, you're pushing really hard, whatever you're doing, you're, you're doing as much reps as fast as you can to, to build up muscles. Um, and then you're sort of resting, but uh, continuing like a, an easy workout uh, for 30 seconds after that. So you get both of them in. Okay. Uh, Connie said, just started taking lean uh, ABC and iodine in the bottle. How much should I be taking to start out with to get this thing going? ABC? 
uh, ap lean apple cider vinegar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. ACV. Yeah. ACV. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the, how much? It's uh, it's highly variable. So you have to use it according to what works for you. So um, usually it's about a tablespoon and a half a cup of water, uh, and uh, mix it around, drink it down. Uh, and if that's not enough, you can use a tablespoon. You can uh, you can use two tablespoons. You can increase the dose as needed, but more is not necessarily better. In fact, if you increase the amount of fluid, then you fill the stomach and that can cause more uh, acid reflux. So, um, so for some people, the ACV works really well and for other people, it does not. So don't just assume that because it worked for one person, it's, it's automatically gonna work for you. Uh, so it's something that you try and if it works, great. If not, uh, then, then you have another issue, a different issue that you may have to deal with. I think so real so. quick, okay. yeah, on the lean ACV, um, this is our apple cider vinegar uh, formula, which also has licorice root extract in it. And the supplement label says three capsules. I think, let's see, it says three a day with water, preferably on an empty stomach at least two hours before bedtime. So I think this helps like during the 610 reset, like 8 p.m. Like take take some of these and like that'll that'll get you into that uh, 10 o'clock time for sleep mode, I would think, right, Doc? Perfect. Yeah. So try it, but like you said, experiment. Yeah. All right, back on mute. <laughs> Joe. I lost my questions. I got distracted. I was looking up lean apple cider vinegar here. So, uh, okay, where did we go? All right. Uh, Bill Davenport, we had a great chat with him last week. He shared his story and it was awesome. He has had some major success. So I'm excited to share that with all of you guys. But one thing uh, he, he said is that he's working on getting his brother to reverse his type two diabetes with our program. And he's been looking into taking a supplement called Exapure to help in losing weight. It has eight items that increase, um, I should know this, BAT, B-A-T, brown adipose tissue. I still told him that he needs to detox with the reversal program and that will also reduce your weight. Once your type two diabetes is reversed, then consider it. I have some non-diabetic overnight friends and I would recommend I would recommend this if useful. What is your thoughts on that, BAT, brown adipose tissue? Okay, so um, brown adipose tissue is the, um, is the metabolic fat. That's, that's what um, uses up more energy. It actually is uh, fat that's used to even um, increase the... Um, in, increase your metabolism so that you make more uh, heat. Uh, so when, when your body needs heat, then it goes to brown adipose tissue to, to increase the heat production. Uh, and you can do that in various ways. In fact, we've, we've spoken on this program once about the um, Wim Hof method where um, you, you sit in an ice bath and, uh, or, or go hiking up in the mountains with uh, just your shorts uh, <laughs> on, a, uh, on a cold winter day. Um, those kinds of things, uh, the um, brown adipose tissue is increased by that. And that's, uh, that increases the metabolism and you burn more during the day. Um, however, it does not take the place of, of doing the program of, of cleaning out, cleansing all of your muscle cells and all of your other cells from all the excess sugar that's in them. So you still have to do that. Yes, the brown adipose tissue is great and, and it's uh, useful, and, um, um, but you don't, you don't always want the excess heat. What if you live in, I don't know, um, Hawaii or Mexico or something where it's not cold uh, and you don't want all that brown adipose tissue making extra metabolism. So um, it, it depends. Um, what I think though is that that he's right that if, if his friend doesn't do the, 
the the diabetes reversal program that doesn't that, that actually decrease the amount of intake, uh, it's probably not going to be very useful. All right, Tom is wondering if you can rebuild or replace the glucose carriers by lowering your glucose numbers. Mm. Glucose transport proteins, if, when, you, when you, so this is the way biological systems work. There's, there's a homeostatic, this is what it wants, wants to be. And if you get too much, um, then it's going to decrease the number of glucose transport proteins um, so that you get to there. Um, if you have too little, it's going to increase the glucose transport proteins so you get to there. So it's going to want to always be there. So yes, that, that's the idea, is when your blood sugar is lower, then you do increase the glucose transport proteins. That's why I mentioned the, the study on the rats where they they found 10 times the glucose transport proteins in their, their, um, in their um, blood brain barrier. Um, be, uh, after the rats had been three days on very low blood sugar. So it's okay to have hypoglycemia to an extent. You don't wanna be in the twenties where you're losing brain cells. Um, but so, and, and you don't wanna bring it down all of a sudden necessarily. You wanna bring it down uh, to a point where, where you're, you're gradually increasing the number of glucose transport proteins. Okay, this is, uh, Marcia says, what do you have to say about WGA, which is wheat germ agglutinin? Wheat germ agglutinin? I don't know. Wheat germ is, is a great source of vitamin E. Uh, it also is a good source of magnesium. Um, glutenin is, uh, is a protein that, uh, that is what makes the, makes bread sticky. Uh, so I think, uh, I think it's okay. It's a protein with vitamin E and all that. It's part of wheat. Um, but I think it's okay. okay. Um, I think you went, did you go to shut your door? Maybe. Okay. Johanna says, I do a lot of Pilates and have some mild neuropathy. Sometimes my toes go numb when doing Pilates. Any reason why? Ah, I, I don't know specifically why Pilates, but um, when the toes go numb, it will have to do with two things. Primarily, it's going to be circulation. Uh, if, if, uh, if you don't, have enough circulation going to your uh, peripheral nerves, then you're going to feel it. And so if you're doing something like Pilates or some kind of workout that dilates your blood vessels in certain muscles of your body, uh, and, and that doesn't, um, and that decreases the circulation to your feet, for example, then you're going to notice it more. Um, the other thing is blood sugar. So if if you're using up blood sugar uh, and your blood sugar is dropping low, then there's going to be less energy getting to those nerve cells and then you're going to notice it there too. So either it's poor circulation, poor sugar, um, uh, poor oxygen flow, something like that. Okay. Uh, Ralph is wondering what exercise do you recommend for people who are recovering from surgery? Um, Anything you can do. The, the research shows that, uh, that people who get up faster from bed and exercise do better. They have fewer infections, they heal faster, um, and, and generally do better than people who, who don't. So they used to put people in bed, you know, you have to be on your back for two weeks, we're going to give you a bedpan, you can't even go to the bathroom. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, but they found out that people who didn't obey their doctors and got up and said, I don't care what the dumb doctor says, I'm getting out of here. They walk out of the hospital. They actually do better. So, uh, so I did some research on that and found out that, that exercise is really good because that's what gets your circulation flowing that gets your anabolic metabolism working and, uh, and, and gets you going. So, um, so the answer to that question is it depends on what surgery you've had. 
and and whatever you can do. So it's really good. Um, I used, I used to work in a nursing home that had physical therapy, and we would have people in there. You know, the day after their hip surgery, and the physical therapist is already working with them on range of motion. They can't get up on their feet yet, but they're on range of motion. Um, yeah, um, or or whatever they can do to to get moving. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Cinechroma, our best-selling advanced blood sugar support formula. Now, thousands of people around the world are taking Cinechroma every day as part of their program to fix their blood sugar using natural ingredients that simply work. Now, Dr. Saunders formulated Cinechroma to meet key nutritional deficiencies that most people have unknowingly suffered from for far too long. With Cinechroma, you get a blend of six key ingredients. The perfect combination of chromium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, which it's important to take those two together, selenium, vanadium, and our 10 to 1 cinnamon bark extract. Now, if you're not already using Cinechroma, I highly recommend that you give it a try and see how it helps your energy, your weight, and your blood sugar numbers. You can get Cinechroma at bartonnutrition.com or on Amazon. If you get it at bartonnutrition.com, you can enter the coupon code webinar25 and you'll save 25% off at bartonnutrition.com. But I realize some people like to go to Amazon as well. So anyways, Cinechroma, highly recommend. Now let's get you back to the Fixed Blood Sugar webinar. Okay, and we, we've had quite a few uh, requests or comments about how it'd be good good for us to do some exercise videos or photos of different exercises. Uh, Aline says, uh, I, I want to see how the body works properly. So, um, okay. And then one last comment here. Roy said, the coffee thing, I see a lot of adding a pinch of baking soda to your coffee fires up your metabolism. And they also say the same thing about adding a pinch of cinnamon to your coffee. So maybe the same thing would apply to tea. I hope there hope there is no prejudice here. He says so. Kind of kind of interesting. You never know. Maybe that would help. Mm, um, I don't know. Let's see. Okay, last question. What is the reason why I get heavy legs? Um, the heaviness is due to the the muscles um, aren't fully functional and. And it could be a muscular problem, uh, in which case it's usually something like magnesium or potassium, low magnesium or low potassium. Uh, uh, but it could also be a circulation problem where you're not getting enough circulation into the muscles of your legs. Um, or a blood sugar problem. If your blood sugar is dropping low, then you'll feel weak and tired. Your muscles won't be able to regenerate very fast. So generally, you have to look at that, the, the heaviness feeling uh, means that the muscles are weaker for some reason. They're not getting enough energy. They're not getting enough oxygen. They're not getting enough circulation um, or electrolytes like magnesium and potassium. Okay. All right. That is it for us today. Thank you, Dr. Sonder. We'll be with your patient. You're welcome. And yeah. we'll see him again next week. All of you, you can head to bartonwebinar.com where you will find more information, not only about these webinars, uh, but all of our products, even the, the products that we mentioned on the webinar today. Uh, I would love to hear from you personally, if you guys would be willing to share your story about how the Diabetes Solution Kit or any of our products are helping you. Um, we have met with quite a few people and they've shared their story and it's just been very cool. Um, our goal is to share those with other people as well, to give them encouragement. So help us to make a difference in people's lives uh, by sharing your story. So if you want to go ahead and send me an email, you can do that at leslie at bartonpublishing.com. Um, I would love to hear from you. Anything else you want to add, Joe? Yeah, so some people might not be too excited about like having their story shared with the world yeah. on video. And so what I would say is, like at least share it with us and we like we can do the video together and if you decide at the end of that like yeah I don't think I want other people to watch it totally fine we just want to hear that. 
like, you know, and have hear that from you, be able to ask you questions and hear about your journey. Um, and then I think a lot of times, yeah, you might realize like, this is kind of fun. Let's go ahead and share. It. And if not, that's totally fine too. So uh, yeah, I put a little thing in the chat earlier. I'm offering a little uh, bribe, bribery <laughs> sometimes works good, but three free bottles of supplements. And we didn't really talk about supplements today other than lean ACV, but we've got Cinechroma, turmeric bp um, nervala we've got immune support healthy gut support um let's see lean acv we've got niagara xl and uh what did i miss iodine and magnesium so i've got these all sitting right next to me because i use them all the time myself and uh you can pick three of those so we'll send them to you after we re get that video recorded so uh we just want to hear your stories what's that no nope, my facebook was <laughs> up and so we heard you uh, sorry no problem so yeah uh what time zone are we in central right in the middle no you said that yeah so cool um but yeah shoot leslie an email don't shoot leslie she you know hasn't done anything wrong send her an email leslie at bartonpublishing.com and uh, also say a prayer for Leslie. I think she might be moving her family uh, potentially real soon here. And that's fun. So you got a lot of- It's a good on. move. It's a good move, so. Yeah. Uh, but I'll but, still be in central. Still be in the central time. Yeah. Next. Yeah. You'll probably actually be like just as far away. You're just like moving like a different direction on the opposite side. So still like 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes away. But- you're going to be closer to some cool and good restaurants. That's true. That's worth it. I don't know if Sherman has too many, like, you know. Uh, they're, fr you know they're fresh from. out. Fresh out of yeah. restaurants. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, thanks, Leslie. Good stuff. Good job, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time. We might Bye, have guys. a surprise for them, too. So a surprise announcement of the future host. Speaking of which, I think we should ask Cheryl. Mm. She would be great. So. It would be great. For the following. Okay. okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>